Luka Doncic and Devin Booker in another dust up. And we love it. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Happy Monday morning and welcome to Run It Back. We've got an all-star crew today. Well, it's our regular crew, but I like to think of us as all-stars. Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider, Chandler P. The office is coming along nicely. That's good to see. And of course, Eddie Gonzalez on the end. Guys, we had a a really fun weekend of basketball, uh, but unfortunately, we have to start with some serious news before we can get to all that. Thanks to John Morant. Uh, All eyes on him right now. He'll be away from the team for at least two games, uh, NBA conducting an investigation into an IG live video that he himself posted from a nightclub um, in the early Saturday morning hours in basically appearing to hold a gun near his head. Uh, Shams, this is a story that is just giving people a lot of anxiety and questioning. What is the latest on Jaws situation? So John Morant will be away from the team for the foreseeable future. He has been essentially suspended for two games, at least with the Grizzlies, Sunday's game against the Clippers, Tuesday's game against the Lakers. Um, And so right now, John Morant came out with a statement. He said that he's going to be receiving help for stress and his his well-being. And so while he's doing that, I'm told, you know, the Grizzlies are pretty much expecting that this is going to be a a little bit here. This is going to be an indefinite period of time. We saw Taylor Jenkins said last night they're going to give him as much time as he needs to get right. Their focus, first and foremost, is that he's able to get the help that clearly he does need. The, the interesting thing here is that the NBA investigation, like you said, Michelle, it's ongoing. I'm told they could still, the league could suspend him even on top of the two games that he has already received, could add, because technically those two games, he's away from the team, he's essentially suspended, but from what I gather, he's still being paid. So the NBA could come down with a more stringent penalty, more stringent discipline, but there are a lot of questions in this. Was that gun his? Does he have a license? Was this in Denver? Was it in LA? Uh, has he been traveling with it as well? But this has clearly been a period of events here in John ja Morant's life that have uh, raised eyebrows, not only for, for the Grizzlies, people around the league, the NBA. This is definitely a major concern for everyone involved in John ja Morant's life, even his sponsors like Nike. So there's a lot of responsibility here that falls on John ja Morant, and, and we'll see how this plays out. A, a ton of responsibility. Nike, look, he came out with the apology very fairly quickly, which I suppose is about the only thing you could do in that moment. Nike appreciating it. it looks like they're going to support him, at least for now. Uh, Chandler, you, you you played in Memphis. I don't know if that gives you any sort of insight at all into any of this, but it, what is your take on what's been happening and what happened over the weekend? Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. And listen, no matter your view on guns or gun control, whatever it is, Sean hit on the head. I don't know where this video was. If the gun is licensed, that's a whole other bag of worms. Mm-hmm. But regardless, it's just unacceptable with everything going on in this kid's life. His career is taking off. He's an absolute star. He's a role model. There's just zero excuse for this. There's zero reasoning for this. And I hope he spends this time well and does some real soul searching. He's got to cut his friend group down. This is when you see every NBA player has their crew, right? They have their security guard. They have their homies from high school that will fight if anything goes on. (laughs) But now when you start talking about guns and violence and things like this, and almost like you're hyped and you're drunk and you're promoting it on your own social media platform, this is just a horrible look. And let's not forget, this guy's guy's got some issues. The the, the thing about beating up a 17-year-old. Yeah. Now this and and Nike basically just chose him over Kyrie Irving for for his anti-Semitic comments. And then you go and do something like this. Uh, It's just a very, very bad look. And yes, he did apologize and he did the next best thing. And he basically did what he had to do. But there's just there's no room for this. And it's detrimental to the league. It's detrimental to his fans. There's many kids that love John Morant that are wearing his jerseys. And listen, Memphis can be a dicey area. Like every city has their bad places and and you want to be protected and and hire a security guard hire a cop most star players like him have someone like that i had someone like that when i would go out to make sure i was safe but doing that was the gun loaded was it not waving Hmm. it in the air on your live feed it's just it's it's amateur and it's ignorant and, and hopefully he does take the time to get help and you know seems small now but watching the game last night 
the Grizzlies had that game. They need him to succeed. Their whole future, their whole season is based on John Morant. So it's tough. They've given him $200 million. There's no room for you to make decisions like this. You're there to be a professional, mature, role model basketball player. And this is just unacceptable. And hopefully he gets help and betters himself. And looking at his crew and everyone he hangs with, he needs to cut that in like half because clearly this is <laughs> or this is, this is no good. Yeah, Eddie, I, I, I'm like I'm pissed personally. I, I, I feel like we've made him some sort of victim here, and I'm, I'm a little confused by the messaging, Eddie. Yeah, yeah I don't think he's a victim. I, I, I'm sympathetic to all of the issues at hand. G- guns are legal. A lot of NBA players carry guns. They're targets. Sure. It's dangerous to be an NBA player and live your life and be that visible and. I understand all of that, but the timing is terrible with that story coming out. And again, one thing to note about the story about him and the him and the 17 year old, he admitted it himself. He made his own police report and they had their this whole situation. Like, it's not like he's saying that didn't happen. They've had the story this year where a laser, a laser attached to a, whatever it was happened against yeah. the, with the Indiana Pacers and, and his friends and all, all of this stuff. The timing is awful. He knows that. It, Ja, like, he deleted his social media profiles. Great, great idea. He was on there this summer drinking, uh, like, Hennessy and tequila together. Like, he was – some stuff you just shouldn't do. And, and, like, look, it's fine. Ja Morant is completely allowed to live his life. He, if he's legalized to carry weapons, he's allowed to carry a gun as well. All that stuff is great. But for the NBA and for Nike, this is a major crisis. They're both heavily invested in the superstardom of Ja Morant. It is not easy to be a Nike signature athlete. Not a lot of people are bestowed that option. And with them ushering out an old era with LeBron, with KD, with Kyrie literally leaving and ushering this new era with Ja and Devin Booker, that's huge. The NBA is mm-hmm. also heavily invested in his superstardom. He's on a super max contract. He is, he is one of those players who is on a small market team and one of those great stories of we drafted this guy and we built around this guy. He's not leaving. He's staying here. He's one of the more marketable players in the league. He's, he's one of the players that the league has gotten behind and pushing in this way. It is a major crisis for everybody involved. I would not be surprised if this extends beyond two games. It's, mm-hmm. it's a serious issue for the Grizzlies as well. This is a title contender. This is their best player, and they're coming down the home stretch of the season. It's a lot. I sympathize with Ja. I see his statement. I see Nike's statement. I see the Grizzlies talking about it. I, everybody understands this is a very serious issue. I don't think he's a victim. Going back to what Michelle was saying, right? I, I know the Twitter and social media narrative that he is a good child from a good neighbor. That doesn't mean that you can't go astray or be tough or be all this stuff, and I don't want to dig into the di- dichotomy of that. But he has to know there is responsibility that comes with this, with being in this situation and being this prominent. He has to know that that story came out and what it looks like. And he has to know what it looks like when you then, the very next day, get on Instagram and show everybody right? you have a gun for whatever reason. So, no, he's not a victim. He's making mistakes. He's young. And, and I understand all that. But he's not a victim. He's messing up. No. And he's being punished. And that's where we're at with this. It's like it's crazy. It's like he's got this weird gun obsession, which, I, you know, owning a gun. Cool. I own guns, but I you will never, ever catch me posting <laughs> any of them on social media at, in my 20s, my 30s now, because there's a responsibility that comes with that. I don't understand why he is so tone deaf. I, I think part of the reason is we have underreported as the media all of these stories about John ja Morant. I mean, that laser thing just sort of came and went. It was barely talked about. And I feel like maybe we've done him a bit of a disservice by just allowing all of these stories to go in. The problem is you're going to run into the wrong guy who sees you flash a gun and it's game over because that's a threat. And I I am, I'm blown away that this kid who is one of the few players I would pay my own hard earned money to go watch. And I love watching him play pisses me off. Like this, this story pisses me off. It's so irresponsible for a variety of reasons. The league is all about these anti-gun messages. LeBron posted something at two o'clock in the morning the other day about anti-gun. You cannot have one of your faces doing this. It has to be more than two games. And you're letting down not just yourself, your family, your team, but everybody who's invested in this. I, it's, it pisses me off. Like that's all there is, Shams. What, what do you have? What do you have? No, I mean, and Michelle, you're you're obviously right about the points. All, you know, all the points they made, but especially the fact that you can't have a superstar player like John Morant, really any player, but especially a guy like John Morant waving a gun on social media. Clearly, he was out. I don't know if he was at a club, a strip club. I don't know where he was at, 
but clearly wherever he was, it was a public location. There was music blur, bl blasted and, 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 you know, he had a gun. And so to me, this is something that has been a topic around the league behind the scenes is that the Grizzlies, when John Morant was drafted, he was bestowed so much and he was given the keys to the franchise so quick. And he came in as a just, you know, good character, high level competitor. And as Taylor Jenkins said last night, like, this is a good-hearted kid at the end of the day. He's represented everything the right way for the most part, especially when he was drafted. And so there really weren't any boundaries set. And then now you find yourself in a position where you're, you're kind of playing catch-up to a lot if you're that Grizzlies organization. And I think a lot of that also falls on, on, the, on the organization and the franchise and, and maintaining control. Um, John Morant, they kind of did hold him accountable to a degree, but there's clearly another level of accountability that still remains to be seen from a league perspective as well as a team perspective. Yeah, I, I just hope that him, his crew, his family, they take this time and they realize that his life right now, max player, NBA all-star, Nike signature athlete, that's cool. That's really dope. Being this goon, ghetto, gun, like th th that's not cool. That's not who you are. If you are from that life, you got out of it. You are now the face of the NBA. You're the face of the Memphis Grizzlies. There's just no room for that. And Michelle had a great point. When you do, I have a gun. When you have a gun, there's a responsibility that comes with that. And you know what? If you have a gun, the number one rule is you better be ready to use it if you pull it out. Now yeah. he's now he's openly pulling it out on a social media feed. Let's say he does have beef with people. They're watching that. They're seeing that. Now he's putting even more of a bigger target on his back if he is mixed up with the wrong people. So it's just all bad. It's all wrong. Nothing good could have come after this. And and again, I just it's 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 an immature move. And hopefully he was just influenced by his stupid ass friends and 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 he cuts them all off because th there's no room for this at all. Crappy friends. And, and I and look, I understand how it looks on this show. With two white people, two brown people were admonishing the young black superstar who we don't know what he's going through on a daily basis. That's what he said. He's dealing with his traumas and, and all that. We don't know. But we do understand that there is a responsibility as an adult, as an adult with this yeah. level of prominence. And I'm with you guys. The people around him need to be a little more, uh, not, they need to hold him accountable with what is going on. At the end of the day, this is a poor choice of decisions for whomever it is. I uh, ran into Sauce Gardner at the airport, which is not like a name drop flex thing. It's just like I ran I like into him it. and it reminded me of him talking the other day and saying, hey, I, I, my mom worked hard to get me here. I'm not that guy. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm here to like lock in, play football and do all that. It might be Josh's point to reach that point of maturity and say, hey, I need to put all this stuff behind me. I need to lock in and be on this, be the superstar athlete. Yo, that's the coolest guy. Like, I don't care. Like, whatever. I'm not the arbiter of cool. But the coolest guy in the room, <laughs> I've been in a lot of rooms. The coolest guy in the room is the $200 million NBA player who can buy out everybody in the building. <laughs> Trust me. And believe me, Ja, you don't have to be tough. You're a basketball player. It is perfectly fine. You're like one of the most incredible to watch athletes in the world. That is the coolest guy in the room. There's no reason to be whatever other guy he feels like he needs to be. Yeah. It, it's. I hope he gets right. I'm a big fan of Ja Morant. I hope he gets right. I think he will. I, I think this is a crisis on some level. I don't think his life is in shambles. I think he easily turns around. He has the resources. He has the people around him who should be able to hold him accountable and, and get him right. But, yeah, it's frustrating to watch, like, as a man, yes. watching him be do this when he has all these things. He's worked so hard to have. And so, yeah, I, I hope he gets around. I think he will. You know what, Eddie? As a lady with lady parts, I'm also frustrated. And the whole thing made me very <laughs> angry over, over the weekend. And the other thing about it, like, the, I know it's minor, like Chandler mentioned, but he still does have a team that is very much fighting for contention in the West. They are in it. And they had a game last night playing the Clippers in L.A. What a weird day in L.A. Two games, one day. Woo. Uh, Kawhi and PG. This game was good. I, I didn't know what to expect. I thought the Clippers would come out and blow them out of the water. It just didn't turn out that way. Kawhi PG had 76 combined. They did manage to beat this Grizzlies team, but it was close. We will start with the Clippers. Uh, this is the version of Kawhi and PG that gives L.A. hope. Right, Chandler? Like This, this is a bit scary for everybody else to see. It is. And these guys, they look right. They look healthy. They look determined. They're scoring in multiple different ways. It's weird. I'm watching this game last night and and they're down big. And before the game, I'm sitting there looking at them like this. 
this is a gimme. This is a this is a blessing <laughs> for them that they're basically missing half their team. Dylan Brooks is out. John Morant is out. This I would have loved for the Clippers to kind of step on their throat and and basically pound them and and they easily could have lost this game. It's funny I'm sitting there watching the fourth quarter, being like, man, the Grizzlies could really use John Morant right now because you could just see their their yep. lead just slip away and slip away. But yeah, this is a great version of them where we all know the depth of them. We have the shooting. Plumley has been unbelievable for this team with offensive rebounding, just doing everything, tipping the ball out, giving them extra possession. But yeah, this is the version, and there's still a lot of holes. They, they were down, I think, 14 points that were late last night, and they found a way to kind of string together stops. And the Clippers didn't win this game. The Memphis Grizzlies lost this game, and they had their opportunities. They started turning the ball over. They, you could tell they panicked. They needed their guy, their star player, to kind of get them in, in control, and they didn't have that last night. But uh, I, I can't imagine the Clippers took their foot off the gas. They they know this team. They know they're, they're gritting and grinding, and they're going to play, and Tyus Jones usually steps up when John Morant's out and they still had enough to win the game, but this was disappointing to me. The Clippers as good as PG was as good as Ka uh, Kawhi Leonard was, this should have been a blowout. This should have been a statement game. Okay. I know we've lost a couple. I know we've lost some close games, but I would have loved to see the Clippers just pounce on them from the jump and they didn't, and they could have lost this game very easily. Agreed. I thought if the Clippers lose this game, we're done talking about the Clippers, but they barely, they barely managed. There was so much good basketball. We're going to take a quick break right here. This is probably one of the best of, of the weekend. Uh, Luca and Booker. I cannot wait for Eddie's take on this when we return. <laughs> oh, Phoenix and Dallas. This is a, this is a rivalry. Phoenix and Dallas. Suns do get the win here. KD with the go ahead bucket. Luca then has a shot. Misses the easy one. He and Devin Booker, they exchange words. Like this is, I mean, he should have had this, right? That's that's very rare that he would miss something like that. But it's the words after, and it's the the trash talking afterwards. Luca had uh, had this to say: "It's a competitive game. It's all good. Next time, <laughs> just don't wait until three seconds left to talk." I mean, if you didn't know any better, you think they were best friends and they were just about to hang out. But that's not at all what was happening there, Chandler. I love this beef, and I hope that we get to see them in the playoffs. But who are you taking in this beef battle between Luca? And Devin Booker. <laughs> there, there's there's no there's no beef here. And if you really what? watch the video, there's no beef here. And if you watch the video, <laughs> Devin is actually he's talking to the referee. He's talking to the ref. That's what he and, said. And listen, this is great. First of all, I love it. This is great for the league. This is great for the fans. <laughs> These are two absolute stars, both on really good teams. And they go at it. And and now the series is tied two and two. I can only hope for this to be a playoff series. But look, I think this is fantastic. And then at least we're not sitting here today talking about the Mavs final possession, whether it was a horrible yeah. look or what was a turnover. They did the right thing. Luca got to the basket. He's making those nine times out of ten. And they had a chance there. But listen, this is this is now they're they're three and six with Kyrie Irving and the Suns are three and oh with Kevin Durant and, and and it's it's an interesting setup because both these teams are very good and I think the Mavs are gonna come around. They're 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 gonna what? find it. This beef why is, this why is beef, Eddie laughing? Why is that right I don't I don't think there's a real like beef here. I just think it's a competitive spirit. But listen, I, I yeah, they but there's beef. not like there's hatred. It's not like they were gonna fight. They literally I thought they were gonna make out. They're not gonna throw punches. I mean I'm in on that too. <laughs> Whatever they want to do, I'm I'm here for it. Like it's, it's totally fine, Eddie. Why are you laughing? Because when I can't see your face but only hear you, I think you're up to something. I had not seen the Jason Kidd Money Williams video. And that was perfect. <laughs> that was amazing. I, I, I with Chandler. I love this. I love this for the league. That's what Devin Booker said. You do, you guys don't want us to be all friends, and now when this happens, it's a big deal. Uh, I, I don't think it. it's beef either. I think it's basketball. Like if me and Shams play enough basketball games, this something like this might end up happening if, if we're <laughs> competitive enough. Uh, I, I love that nobody's wrong. Everybody was trying to figure out who was wrong in this situation. Book is right for being an irritant and, and kind of <laughs> – Joking with the ref that that's a foul. Luca's right for going, hey, yo, shut up. And, and then they're all right for being upset, getting each other's face. Kyrie was was talking. Kevin yeah, was talking. Was. This is great. This wasn't one of the best games of the season. It wasn't marred by this. Like, this isn't the story. This is one of the best games of the season. Uh, all three of those guys had almost 40 points. Like, this was incredible to watch. 
Uh, it shows what the what the Mavericks can be, even though they ended up losing in the end. It shows what the what the Suns are capable of. And don't let it be lost on you. Late in that game, the Suns went to their bread and butter, and their bread and butter was not Kevin Durant or, or Devin Booker. It was Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton pick and roll. And DeAndre Ayton had a huge putback late in that game to tie it up. This is an incredible game, one of the best games of the season. I love this. The added tension is even better. I hope we get a series. I hope we get series for years to come. Oh, yeah. uh, the Suns owe them one. And there's clearly, you know, there's that competitiveness. They have that history. They've played so much in the last year. How could you not hate him a little bit? But beef? Nah, just basketball. Why, it's just why basketball. can't we just call it beef? That's what we want. We love beef. Yeah. This is not beef. This is not, I, I listen to yeah. Biggie Smalls. This is not beef. Oh, <laughs> Levels to it. Shams, I know, I know you want to get in here. Yeah, you know what? What I'm what I'm curious about is just the development of some of these guys at the back end of the bench. Like Ish Wainwright comes into the game. He had three really big threes in the second half of the game when the game was kind of slipping away. Dallas started to get a lead, and Ish Wainwright came in, made a few big threes. And I think when you look at the job James Jones James Jones has done since he's taken over as Suns GM full time in 2019, hires Monty Williams. They draft Cam Johnson. They go eight and zero in the bubble. Uh, Monty Williams, Devin Booker come out of the scene, win awards in the bubble. Then he goes and acquires Chris Paul. They made to the 2021 NBA Finals. He wins executive of the year, franchise best 64 wins. Now they get Kevin Durant. And you look at the development of guys like Ish Wainwright, uh, Cam Payne, Cam Johnson, Mikhail Bridges, two guys that are now doing well in Brooklyn. You have to give credit, kind of the pipeline of, of the basketball culture and development that's already been there that's made it a destination for a guy like Kevin Durant to want to go play there. And now he's there, and I feel like you add him to what they've already built. What James Jones has built with, with DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul and, and, and Devin Booker. This is a, a super dangerous team. And you look at Kevin Durant, the job he does with Devin Booker, he's really their missing piece. Like, this is the guy that we've been waiting for the last two years. Uh, they had a chance to win the 2021 NBA Finals. They were, this year, and even last year, we felt like they were missing one more guy. They needed to make a move, uh, and they go out and make it. Eddie, look, this this Kevin Durant version of the Suns is batting a thousand, and he's so on brand with the with the go ahead there. As far as this team, as we start to approach the end and we go into the playoffs, is this Phoenix Suns team about as close to untouchable come crunch time as as we can say right now? It's it's very interesting, and I want to credit Monty Williams because coming into the KD era, it looked clear. Josh Okogie was their fifth starter, and they were going to go with him. And the way the Mavericks played him and let him brick all those threes last night, I think it was 0 of 8 from 3, and they were almost all wide open. And for Monty Williams to say, okay, you know what? We can't do that. He tried Terrence Ross, and then eventually landed on Ish Wainwright, who, like Sam said, hit the big threes. He's, he's clearly willing to tamper and, and get into his bench. Now, as far as their crunch time offense, that's tough. And it, it, like I said, they went down with CP and Aiton, and they got the big fella involved late in the game and had a couple big buckets off that. Chris Paul hit a couple big shots in the fourth quarter as well. They had two final plays to try to win the game. The one before the, the, the Kevin Durant shot that we saw, they literally just isoed Book on the block, on the right block. He missed, but DeAndre Aiden had a big putback. But it was, it was Kevin with the ball at the top of the key and said, no, this is for Book, and giving it to him. Then he took his turn later, hit the game when he shot. That is a tough offense to deal with especially if you have somebody on the floor who you can worry about on the weak side corner you really got to pick your poison and they can adjust to every matchup with that as well that's tough now they have to get there and they have to defend all night but yes in the final three minutes of a playoff game you do not want to deal with the issues they present yeah i mean watching them on the defensive end or offensive end it's crazy because you have two of the best wing scores you have one of the best facilitating pick and roll point guards and you have a dominant big who's rolling who's kind of great at that little in-between floater jumper and then they have guys like damian lee like uh wayne wright that last night was hitting shots okogi struggled last night but he's been great for them tory craig landry Shamet was awesome before he got hurt so they even that fifth guy they can really space the floor with it's tough to guard these guys. Even Dallas last night was throwing double teams at him, and Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, they would just go away from the double team and either get to their pull-up, get to the free throw line, or find one of these shooters uh, and knock it down. So offensively, this is this, this team is a nightmare. It's a mismatch nightmare. Not many people are going to be able to stop it. It just comes down to the defensive end. And same thing with Dallas. Again, you look at them. 
they have a really good duo. They have the guys that can score the ball. Kyrie Irving and Luka are going to be fine offensively. They need to find a consistent third guy like a Tim Hardaway, a Christian Wood, one of these guys that are consistently kind of loosen up the defense about that. Again, not allow other teams to double team them, but it's all about the defensive end. This is It's like Denver with them. They have the points. They have the scoring that are going to keep them in games. And, man, they are fun to watch. Kyrie Irving, just what he can do with the ball. It's special, but they're going to have to find some toughness. They're going to have to find some some defensive guys to come in and kind of muck up the game because uh, they don't have that right now. And and again, they've struggled end of game, but at least last night, Luka got a good look. At least he, this game should have went to overtime. He should have, he's going to make that next game, but it's leading up to that. It's getting that big stop. It's getting the loose ball. It's taking a big charge when the game's online and they have not been doing that at all. No, I mean, look, I think everyone kind of figured Kevin Durant plug and play ready to go. That was never really the assumption when it came to Kyrie and Luca playing together. And they are two and five when both of them have been in the lineup. In the five losses, those have come down to the final minute, which is a bit of an interesting stat right there. I, I know they've got a little bit of time left still to figure things out, Choms, but are the Mavericks happy so far with the pairing that they put together here? From everything I've been told, they are. They're excited about what Kyrie Irving's brought to the table. They, they've they had nothing but positive conversations with him behind the scenes and, and how that's developed and his wanting to be there long term. Um, you know, right now, I think both sides want to see where this can go for sure. I don't think there's either side discounted anything. Uh, but their goal, when they went out and got Kyrie Irving, you trade two stars, you trade draft picks, you want to keep that guy. You that, that's, that's the guy that you want to resign this summertime. And I think... They've played well down the stretch of some games. They've struggled some other games. Last night, Luka Doncic literally had a bunny to tie the game, sent it to overtime. He missed it. That's just how the game goes sometimes. Yeah, I mean, th- when you look at their return so far, they've ran two teams off the court and played five other tough games and in- down the line. And like Sean's mentioned, this was a layup to go to overtime against what a lot of people think is one of the very best teams in the league. And they're adjusting as well. But still, this is one of the most talented teams in the league. They were right there with them. Uh, What I think they do have is they have such a respected coach in Jason Kidd. He can make that adjustment night night in and night out and say, okay, this is the matchup that benefits Kyrie the most. This is the matchup that benefits Luka the most. And on and on and on. Last night, they clearly felt that Luka had the advantage there, and he was killing the Suns. Like, there's just no way around it. They put Chris Paul on him, he'd post him at back him in. They put Josh Kogi on him, same thing. They put anybody bigger and, and too slow, he's going right by them. And he had, it was actually a great move to get to the rim. And I, and I don't know if it's a foul or not. Devin Booker certainly thinks it is. But it was a great move, created space. Got into the paint. Usually he's shooting a step back there and got a layup. Like, they were right there. They look fine. The problem for them is they're running out of time. And they, they got to they gotta get a good matchup in the playoffs. But they are a dynamic offensive team. And, and Luka and Kyrie, when they're both going like they were two nights ago, you cannot beat that. There's just no way around it. But they're not going to go for 40 every single night. So you have to figure out the rest as well. <laughs> crazy to say out loud um Lakers also played yesterday <laughs> playing the Warriors Steph was back uh but we'll start with the Lakers because Anthony Davis had 39 they have of course no D'Lo no LeBron um but they still managed the win Chandler are you impressed with this Lakers team without LeBron James <laughs> Yeah, I'm super impressed. And and this is a team that could definitely just throw in the towel and they could chalk it up and our best players out. We're not healthy. We've been up and down and, and they're not doing that. And this is the version of Anthony Davis. They need 14 to 25 from the field, making his free throws 39, eight and six. This is when they can be really good is when he dominates a game like this. And and they need every single one of these. And you look, they, they, they've added depth. They've added youth. We've talked about every time. They've definitely gotten better. I love the play of Austin Reeves. He's just such a gritty dude. He can he can get a bucket. He can ISO you. And they're going to need more wins like this. And I, I can't help but hope that D'Lo and, and LeBron come back soon and they're full strength because – they are dangerous, and and again, they, they did get a lot better. And to beat a Warriors team like this that has the experience, that's pretty much healthy without Andrew and Steph Curry back in the lineup, this is a huge win. And and they are right there in the thick of things to kind of sneak into that play-in game or maybe even get to the 60 that I even have to play, depending whoa, on what they did whoa, last month. But, but they are right there and. I hate to tell you, Michelle, they they are they're 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 playing well at the right time. We'll see what happens. Listen, they're still we talk we're gonna talk about this every day. One team wins, you do one not. team loses. You do but not I'm, hate to tell me that, by the way. You're a liar. Uh, you do not hate telling me that. You loved it. Like today, Second. Like today, today <laughs> I like the Lakers. Can I point this out? 
Yes. Like the Lakers, we had to Photoshop this graphic because the Lakers do not have the tiebreaker over the Jazz. So technically they'd be knocked out. I just want to make sure everybody understands the math here. I don't want anybody to be confused about what's going on. It's but, crazy though. Like looking at that, like I think the Lakers could beat the Jazz in a series. I think the Lakers could beat the Pelicans in a series. I think they could beat the Mavs, the Timberwolves. Like they, they are a tough, they present a tough matchup. But with LeBron, right? Like, I mean, which we don't know. I mean that would help. Give me D'Lo, Shams. When's D'Lo back? They just they need they need the most <laughs> bodies possible. But yes, they, they're going to struggle without those two guys. But if they get in and they do, I mean, we're still talking a month and a half away. That's they're. I got to imagine they're back by then. So they just got to get in, and we'll see what happens. Oh. Yeah, D'Angelo Russell is clearly closer than LeBron James. I think they thought he would be back by now. In some ways, it was a day to day injury. It was an ankle sprain. Uh, but the hope is that he's back sooner than later. The thing that I'm most impressed by is since LeBron James has been out, uh, Anthony Davis, 35 points a game, 11 rebounds a night, and three blocks per game. That's the Anthony Davis we saw early in the year who was dominant, who was doing it on both ends of the floor. And then, you know, he obviously got hurt, and it's been a, a slow climb back to that position. They need him to play at that elite level every single night. Otherwise, they have no chance. But I agree with Chandler. Like, the fact that this team is still floating, I think they can present any of those teams – a real challenge. Yes, they need LeBron James back in the lineup. We don't know when that'll be. Three week evaluation, reevaluation for him. And even after that, I, I don't know if the Lakers think he's going to be back in three weeks. I don't think it'll be just the three weeks, uh, likely beyond that. And so you're, you put yourself in a position where you hope that he's back right before the playoffs or, or he gets, in, gets back for the play in. Uh, look, the Warriors, they got Steph back. That was the big thing, right? He missed 11 games. He played, I think, 32 minutes or so, 27, 2 and 6 in his return. But look, they're 7 and 24 on the road. That is, well, really just gross, Eddie. Uh, as far as what they can and cannot do come playoff time, they're going to have to play on the road. So, what's the plan here? Look, I mean, they might get home court advantage. They still got some time. <laughs> they look oh. great. Besides yesterday, they had some weird lapses i mean and they, they were up against an incredible performance on the other side but we talk about this every week and we keep waiting to be worried about this team i'm just not i just can't i just cannot be worried about this team i've seen <laughs> them have big wins in the last month without steph i steph looked fine yesterday i mean he yeah. looked, got to get in rhythm a little bit but you know you know 27 points he, he hit some threes like he looked like steph and curry They'll, they'll be fine. I think the story of this game is Anthony Davis. And I'm just going to say it. Like, I'm just oh, social God. team, get ready, all that stuff. I'm ready for Anthony Davis as his own team. I'm ready for a team to be built Whoa. around Anthony Davis to propel him to be the superstar he's supposed to be because there are nights like this. There are nights like that stretch he had in November before he got hurt. He looks like he could be the best player in the world. We just – like, we haven't got to see it because of health in a bunch of different situations. But – I want to see him back on his, his own, own team, team whether it's a small market, wherever else. I don't care. I just want to see the maximum Anthony Davis. And I don't know. I mean, I hopefully we do so. get to see that at some point soon. I mean, talent-wise, he 1,000% can do it. It just comes down to injuries. And and like Michelle just said, he did have his own team. <laughs> and he bounced in. And I think, they, you know, they made the playoffs. And, and he was great. But – how long can he be great for to be one of these perennial all-star players like that? You have to play and taking it from somebody who didn't really play a lot of games. You have to be in the lineup. You have to be dependable. Uh, and he just unfortunately has not been, but this is the version that the Lakers need for the next two months. Stay healthy, dominate games. And on the flip side, same thing for the Warriors. It was great to see Steph Curry back to miss that much time. And to still, he was a little rusty, but that's why you don't worry about a Warriors team because they have guys like that. And when I'm watching, I was watching the game with my friend and when, when they're up, you know, 10 or they're down 10, 11, 12 points against the Warriors, that's like being down like three or four or five points to any other team because they're so <laughs> explosive. They can get back so quick. The Warriors are officially the hardest team to bet against because they can just go on crazy momentum runs um, and they're dangerous. And that's why I don't worry. And look, they are two games out of the need home court advantage. But even yeah. if they don't, this isn't a team to worry about depending on who they get. I don't want to play them in the playoffs. Damn sure not oh. the first. I, uh, Shams, I, I want to thank you here, although your your thing kind of is doing it for us. Um, and we will talk with you in the morning. <laughs> when we come back, however, we are going to celebrate Giannis's latest triple-double. What? <laughs> and your New York Knicks on a nine-game winning streak. Sweet. When we return. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it. Yes. Uh, we... We are talking some Milwaukee and some Washington. And look at that. 
a triple double right before our eyes. Giannis with 23, 10, and 13. Hmm. <laughs> but was it really a mystery to be solved by our own Eddie G? <laughs> I'm going to let you go first because you on the text thread were on fire. Uh, your thoughts on the triple double you just witnessed? <laughs> I just want my apologies. Like, what? that's all. I don't care. I'm completely cool with him being a stat patter. I just want my apologies from all the Bucks fans who cussed me out and called me whatever they called me because I've been proven true. That's all. I just want to be right and admit I'm right. This is egregious. It's hilarious. I, you know, what's his name? Corey Kispert. Play some defense, buddy. Like, Blessed. don't let him do this. You know what he's doing. My favorite part of this entire situation, though, is the announcer. And I wish I remembered her name. But she was just like giddy. She could. She was just like, oh, oh my God, is he going to get the rebound? He got the rebound. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's great. Stat pad your life away, Yadis. I'm just happy it's all out in the open now. And I want my apologies. I'm waiting. My, my Twitter is public. Shh. Go ahead. Good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> I loved it, Chandler. I thought it was a genius move on his part. I hated it. I hated it. And I wish Kisper would have locked in or played even and then Giannis doubled down after and says he thought about scoring. Like, no, you didn't. Everyone knows you just pulled the ball out. Uh, and what's funny, even me, like I'm laughing right now. Like it's hilarious. It's a joke. Any other player, I feel like we're ethering on this show saying how lame this is. This is Probably. Ricky Davis-esque and it's tacky. And he doesn't, I wish they just wouldn't have given him the rebound because he didn't earn this. And I get it. It's jokes. It's funny. And Giannis is the sweet sense of humor guy. And he, he means well. But this is this is pretty whack to me, and I wish they would not. I wish you would just stuck him at nine. This like yeah, like this, this. I, yeah, like, like is so that wrong? Draymond, I feel so, like that's fun too. If Draymond Green or it's, someone like that, Trey Young did this at the end of the game, we would be roasting them today. <laughs> well, okay, Yo, but can I, we? There are different people. Like we like people more than we like other people. I think yeah, that's clearly, fair. clearly. Like this is my issue though. That that's a, my exact issue. Zion Williamson did like a much cooler version of this. It's, the game was over and he said, you know what? I'm going to dunk. Too. I'm going to give something to the fans. And there was almost a riot. They almost jumped him on the court. I, nobody, we should all love Zion Williamson with our entire basketball hearts. It was amazing. It was the greatest play of the season so far. And they almost fought him. Giannis did this and it's like, great. Triple double. Put it in the books. That's fire. Fourth triple double of the season. Fire. MVP Giannis. We gotta, we gotta make up our mind. Let's have some consistency. It would have been way cooler if he like dunked it, <laughs> like off the backboard. Yeah. Give Probably. him the rebound, but give us a show at least. But he, like, it was. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm just done. I love that. I just want my like, apologies. Hey, just you want my apologies. Like Look, nobody, on the, nobody on the Wizards. Nobody on the Wizards. Nobody on the Wizards was pissed about this. The game was over. They and then they just, he's just. I don't know. It, it, it feels it feels yucky. Okay, but you guys liked the Zion one and don't like this one. I liked both. So the only one consistent here so far <laughs> is me. I think both of them are very entertaining moments, and I appreciate that. That's what I'm here yeah, for. <laughs> I just feel like Zion with the whole dunk contest, is he going to do it? He gave us a little taste. This was just like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, this, this, this didn't sit well with me. Okay, but in he fairness, they are the rebound. best. They, they have the best it record, wasn't even so it's like... not – like, <laughs> they're the best team, aren't they? It I mean – well, I will say they are, they are the best team, and this was just yeah. business as usual. They lose to the 76ers on a really tough ending the night before, that was a good and, one. and they just come back and they just win this game, business as usual, carry on. So we're it's getting outshadowed by this this stupid triple double with an asterisk next to it. But yeah, they <laughs> just went in there and they easily uh, won this game, and and they're still dominating the NBA right now. God, I love it. I hope I he does it again. Shaq. I want Shaq to tell us how he would have thrown Giannis in the fourth row for that or something. <laughs> like, let's stand on this. Stand on the, the energy we keep with this because I'm, like, like I said, throw it off the backboard and dunk it. Like, give us a little bit of both. Do your stat padding and give uh, us a show. I would have loved that, points, too. But, two points and a rebound if he did that, Eddie. Yeah. You're right. Look, it could have been cooler. I'm innovative. You see what I mean? Yeah, no, Listen I'm, I'm me. with you on that. I got it the right ideas, been. Giannis. But it almost is funnier because of the simplicity and the fact that nobody on the Wizards gave a damn. Like, that to me is my favorite part. Zero pride involved on the part of Washington in this moment, these final seconds. Um, look, I feel like we've been disrespectful in saving this last game for last, but unfortunately, sometimes that's just how it works. Because your New York Knicks 
are on a <laughs> nine game winning streak. And by the way, I can't find a reason to root against them. And I don't know how to deal with that. IQ with 38, eight and seven filling in for the sitting Jalen Brunson. This was a, another fun game to watch over the weekend. Chandler, how impressed were you by quickly? Uh, I was super impressed. And maybe I just haven't watched the Knicks a lot, but this kid, <laughs> he's got game and he's having fun out there. He's shooting the ball from deep. He's so quick on that first step, right foot, right hand, finishes in a bunch of different ways. This kid is an actual hooper. And I remember he was kind of in and out of the rotation. Is he a trade piece? Is he not? No chance they should trade this guy. I watched this guy a full game last night, and he can play. He took over the double, the second overtime there. He got to the free throw line. He also <laughs> plays defense. He's he's dancing out there. He's having fun. And this Knicks team, I kind of been down on them all year long, and I don't think they still have enough to compete with those top three teams. But this this is fun. This is great for the league. This is like this the Kings being good in the West. Like, let's get MSG popping. Let's get them past the Cavs, get them home court advantage. Let's get them in the playoffs and get a good matchup in the first round. And this team can be dangerous. But watching this kid play last night with no Jalen Brunson on the road and they go in there and grab their ninth in a row, you can't possibly find anything bad to say about the Knicks right now. He's the odds on favor right now on FanDuel for uh, for six man of the year. They're a game out of the four seed, Eddie. I know this pains you, but just so you know, I'm enjoying it. Um, just in case you wanted to know, how do you feel about this New York Knicks team? Because I feel like we are all trained to sort of wait for them to just suck. Right. But it, right now, <laughs> this is fun. fun. No, this is fun. I mean, it, it, quick. Post the post the leg routine, buddy. Post the cardio routine. <laughs> I, I don't know. How, he played the entire second half in two overtimes. We yep. joke about Tom Thibodeau, but he, he just doesn't care. He's going to play his guys. But he earned it. He looked incredible all night long. Like Chandler said, on both ends of the court, hit big shots late, played a ton of defense. But I'll say about the Celtics, and I – I like this Celtics team a lot. I like the culture they've built. I love that they have two great young wings. I love everything they do. But when they turn into this three-point shooting contest team and they're just running up and down the court just chucking threes like it's 2K, they're shooting more threes and they're shooting twos. They're, get, they're not shooting mid-range shots when they get to have a chance to win the game, so they want to force it in the paint. They're a frustrating team to watch. And if you get a chance and you go on one of these apps and you look at the shot charts, look at Jason Tatum's shot chart. It was one of the disgusting displays I've ever seen. It was all threes at the top of the key and all layup attempts inside the key. Scored 40 points. Great. Lost the game. That was a ridiculous display of basketball. And they deserve to lose. At the end of the day, they deserve to lose chasing as many threes as they did. They are a frustrating team to watch. But they have proven that that style can win playoff games, playoff series. They were two games away from a title last year. So, hey, maybe this year they hit enough threes. But who are they frustrating to watch? But going back to the Knicks, yes. The Knicks are fun. I've admitted it. They're fun. Right. They're good. Mitchell Robinson's coming along. Uh, Jalen Brunson has looked great all season long. Julius Randle, big game winner the other night. Kind of fumbled it last night, but that's cool. Quickly pulled up right. for him. Great team. Great team. I'm enjoying them I, as well. I find myself rooting for him, Chandler. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I, and again, it's great. It's great. The NBA is more fun when the Knicks are good and and the Nets kind of took all the drama and the headlines all season long. And, and this is a feel good for the Knicks. On the other side, the Celtics, this is a dangerous time for them because, again, looking at them, Jason Tatum took 17 threes. Al Horford took 10. Marcus Smart took 11. That is a lot of threes. And watching them last night, like Eddie, I was frustrated because they do have so many good ISO players. They should be getting to the free throw line more. They should be moving the ball more. And still, with all this being said, they did have a chance to win. I would have loved to see Tatum try to get foul there or stop and pull up instead of kicking the ball to Horford in the corner for a potential game winner. But, listen, I, again, Boston Celtics, I'm not worried about them because they are like Milwaukee where they score and they defend. They can switch. They can go small. They can go big. I'm not worried about them. This was more to me impressive on the Knicks side that, you know, these guys can play that long and quickly. Again, he played 55 minutes last night. That, like I, They better gave that man an off day today. And it's, it's insane. There it is, yeah, Eddie. This, this, this is – that shouldn't be like that. That's insane. That's ins <laughs> I mean, that's a hey, that's, that's a weird chart. I'm modern, not gonna lie. Modern basketball, as they say, you know, <laughs> it's reason in the paint, but you can lose games like that too. That's 
59 three pointers, even with 10 extra game minutes, that, that that's a lot of three in a game. But and, and we always like, talk like about Taylor said they had a shot. They had a shot yeah, to win. And they're, they're not getting hot like some of these other teams at the right exact moment. So I, I would think that's a little <laughs> bit concerning. Um, we had some fun dunks over the weekend. That man has a family. Jackson Hayes, come on down. Boink. Uh, Ooh, that's Ooh. fun. Yeah, this kid business is decision by by the young fella to get out of the way. That that yeah, man can was, jump though. He he. <laughs> no, that's just looks so Kaminga, easy. Kaminga got so stuck right there at that moment. He knew. Do I take a charge? Do I block? And he just got the hell out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> just made it quick. Uh, Lamar Stevens just on the Pistons in general. Oh. God, just why once. Weiss, you're jogging, buddy. You got to sprint. You got to sprint back, or this will happen. <laughs> Look, watch Jonathan Wiseman. Just uh, dunked on. This tough. <laughs> this is the only time we're talking about the Pistons is a guy named Lamar Stevens banging on the whole team. Well, you know, it's uh, the lottery. It'll be fine. Uh, Mark Williams over Nick Claxton. Mm. Uh, Ooh. Okay. okay. Let me see again. Hey, Eddie, you still got Nick Claxton, Defensive Player of the Year. I don't see all that wow. barking in Brooklyn Too anymore. Soon. It's been a long season, Chan. It's been a long <laughs> season. Big win last. Look at that score, by the way. Look at that score. I'm sure that defensive rating was beautiful. But <laughs> Also, complete Eddie, side Eddie, note. Eddie I know, him down. Complete side note. I know KD is great on the Suns, but Mikael Bridges is, can go, Eddie. Yeah, my, right? He is a stud. Oh, my goodness. Mo Wagner and Drew Ooh. Banks. Uh oh, it's the it's white the classic white, white on oh. white crime. Chandler. You're, gonna, you're right. You're gonna say it. I was waiting for somebody to say it. You gotta say it every time. Guy. You have to I bring awareness. Picture, to I picture this kid like getting knocked out by Killian Hayes with like a like getting pushed in the head every time I see him. <laughs> God. You know remember what? Though? That, no, Devin Booker. We never talked about that. He was like unconscious during that little <laughs> tussle by the bed. Shocking, but yeah, nice dunk. Uh, that's yeah. He Devin tried, Booker though. said he that's tried. a push off. Zach Levine. Mm. Oh, sure. I'm going to just say it, Chandler, and you can feel free to disagree, but this is the best uh -oh. dunker of all time in my mind. Oh, wow. Of all, of all time? Of all time. Hey, you ain't lying. It just I'm looks not... so pretty when he dunks. Wait, of eternity? <laughs> of all time. In the, in the history of humanity. Wow. That's a yeah, hell of a statement. Look at the, He did this in the middle of a game on a, on a shot blocker. Well, yeah, that's I know, crazy. but like that's a I, I don't I wasn't prepared for a statement of such gravity. Like I, we need a break so I can think about what Eddie just said. Uh, when we come back, <laughs> we'll try to win you guys some money or we'll lose you some money. Better odds of that when Run It Back returns. Make the rest of the NBA season a slam dunk with FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Now is the perfect time to join FanDuel. The app's easy to use. There are always great promotions. And when you win, you can get paid instantly. So jump into the action and bet the NBA. Download the app and sign up to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And I think it's a miracle that uh, Wednesday's parlay, guys, we all got it right. This has not happened in, I will say, weeks. Weeks and weeks. Look at us. You guys, keep, you guys keep messing it up for me. Uh, no, in fairness, <laughs> Eddie's been crushing it. But yeah, you're probably we can right. only work on the streak from today on. So, Eddie, what do you have for us this evening? Um, I'm going to go with Damian Lillard over 36 and a half points. I know it's an insane amount of points. But remember, he scored Jeez. 71 on the Rockets, and the Pistons are trying to out-tank everybody. So they're going to mm. they're gonna say, hold my beer, and I'm expecting way more than 36 <laughs> points for Dame tonight. Dang, that's a big one. That's they're Over 36 and a half is big, Chandler. How are you feeling about that? I don't know. It's a crazy pick, and it's even crazier that I like it. Like, I also <laughs> think he's going to go over. <laughs> this is nuts. Um, I, took a, I took a cheapie here. Uh, the points, I think, is like six and a half. I think that's a lot of points. Who knows? So I just took Nuggets. <laughs> Money line against the Toronto Raptors, who are not very good. Uh, okay, that's fair. And I we're all rooting for Jokic at this point. Pelicans, I took them plus five and a half over your Sacramento Kings. I look, I'm not I don't know that they're gonna win, but maybe they'll make it a close one. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyways, 20 bucks wins you about $78. Um, I feel good about this, guys. I feel great about this, actually. Anybody have any final last words before we part ways until tomorrow? Uh Chandler, did you have a great weekend? 
I did. I had a good weekend. I would like them to use me, actually. You know, the guy, the the guy on the picture about the betting little ad you did before. Can they put me mm-hmm. in the fan jersey next year, please? <laughs> right I mean, here. they're listening please now, so please I'm sure you'll get an email yeah. if they decide to do that. <laughs> We're done for today. We'll be back in the morning. Have a great one. Run it back, yeah.